Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Observability and Security track. I'm joined here by George Cosmides, and we're going to go right over to his talk on creating and publishing a Blazor component as a NuGet package. I'm excited. Have fun. Thank you, Patrick. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this event. Uh, I know you've watched some very interesting topics already, but I hope I will introduce you to some very interesting things about Blazor. So um, the way I'm doing things usually is to have a few slides, not much, and then jumping directly into hands-on stuff like Sync Studio and Azure DevOps, GitHub, uh, whatever you're going to use. So just bear with me for a few slides, it's not going to be much, and we are done. First of all, everything is fine and you're seeing my, my screen, I'm sharing my screen correctly, right? Uh, if something is wrong, just, just ping me. Um, so that's me. I'm George Cosmidis and Microsoft MVP, Cloud Solution Architect and .NET Software Engineer. You can reach out in all of the social handles that you can see at the end. I've learned out of experience that my name is a bit more difficult, so I created this, uh, this QR code. You can scan and, and uh, reach out. You can find the page that, with all, all my links for social, from social media. Now, I just have to note this. Uh, when I when I um, agreed with the conf guys that were very polite to do this talk, I was working at all plan, and this is what you see there. But things have changed, and I'm now working at Slalom. Actually, I start like this Tuesday in a week, right? Um, not much here since we don't have enough time. Let's move on directly to Blazor. As I promised, just a few uh, slides about Blazor. So what is Blazor in general, right? Blazor is targeting people that they are trying to avoid any JavaScript coding experience. Uh, there are people that don't like weekly type languages or that the, like me, I don't like, I almost hate variable hosting. I don't know where is what. Uh, TypeScript tried and it did it to attract some of those devs. Um, some others went towards React, Angular, there is no best choice, right? It's a flavored approach. So JavaScript flavors ruled the front end world for so long that uh, at the end, JavaScript in the form of Node.js start infiltrating, let's say, the back world, the back end world. Uh, strongly typed languages fought back. And at the end, the ASP.NET team uh, was first to introduce a completely new approach, a solution to this problem, let's say, if it is a problem. It's called Blazor. So it is actually an attempt to run a strongly typed language like C Sharp, the front end, and help everyone that wants minimal interaction, let's say, with JavaScript, just throw, write C Sharp as he knows it and do the same things. So in essence, let us uh, let me underline here that um, Blazor is not here to replace JavaScript. They are working together, but it can minimize, let's say, your, your uh, interaction with Blazor. So Blazor comes in two flavors, the web assembly and the server side. The web assembly runs completely uh, in the browser. So you write your codes, assemblies are downloaded one time only in the browser, and then everything runs there. And then there is the server side, which the communication between the browser and the server is done with uh, SignalR, yeah, with WebSocket. So it's direct communication. In any case, you don't see anything changing in the browser. You don't see actual refresh or anything, even in web uh, tools, or, or uh, I think we'll see that later anyway. So we know more or less what is uh, Blazor now, but what is a Blazor component? So Blazor applications in general are created using components, which are, uh, they are flexible, they are lightweight, they can be nested, they can be reused, they can be shared between projects. Uh, components then in a sense are, are self-contained chunks of user interface, right? It can be a dialogue, it can be a form, can be an entire page that's also a component. 
this is, for example, the component. This is uh, the, this is from the sample from the Microsoft sample that comes when you start a new Blaze or application. Very simple thing. You just click a button. The button that you see here. Uh, this method runs here. The counter increases, and this counter you can see how it increases live here without any refresh or anything. So, as I promised, not too many slides. We are ready. Let's see some Visual Studio, how we start with a Blazor, because we need to do a few things. This is a bit ahead, so let me minimize it. I was um, practicing before we start. So let's start Visual Studio from the beginning. I started, I will scroll. Ah, OK, it started over here. Perfect. Create a new project. Yeah, just need to wait a minute. Type Blazor. Um, these are the two flavors, the two choices, the web assembly that runs completely on the browser and the server app that is more or less client server application connected with Blazor. I will use this one for now, but feel free to play around. Not many things change. So uh, just of course, as a side note here, it's relatively an easy choice, right? You understand that when you are using WebAssembly, you are moving all your computational load to your browser, to the customers. So if that load is big, it's huge, most probably your browser, the customer browser will not be able to handle it and you will have a very slow application doing probably nothing. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a, an application that it's it has minimal computational speed and um, um, requirements and its client can just spend a few milliseconds on his browser as well to do things then you do that and that when you do that you are actually lowering the cost of your cloud infrastructure of azure for example because no computation is happening there there is a chance, of course, to do bigger projects, vast projects where uh, computational loads are very big, and then you're choosing the uh, server side Blazor. So let's start like that. Blazor up to whatever. Uh, let's continue. .NET 6, nothing to change here. Wait a minute to create that. Do I have anything else running? I hope not, and I don't. Okay. Whenever I'm sharing my screen, things go extremely slow, to be honest, but it will load, trust me. So, that's it for anyone that it's, uh, uh, he has an idea about Razor, he will find this uh, very familiar, right? So let's go. This is our search pages, um, our main layout, the navigation menu on the right, some survey that's popped up, the import, the global using that we have for applications. So it's, it's Razor. And you will see that later even more. These are the pages, the actual pages that uh, are coming as a sample. And this is the counter. This is more or less what we've seen in the PowerPoint solution. A button, you click on the button, this method runs here, and this uh, variable increasing is, is showed, is visible here. If we run it, you will see that actually nothing happens to the browser. No reload, no nothing. Yeah, sharing my screen, as I said, make things quite slower. That's why it's better. Later on, we will switch to a project that is already ready in GitHub, not have these delays, let's say. Now let me see where will the browser pop up. We'll here. So let me bring it to the other screen. OK. That is a default sample application that comes um, loading. The first time that you will see this, it shouldn't be that slow, obviously, and it's not that slow if you try it without presenting. Uh, a lot of uh, assemblies are 
download it to the browser. This is happening only once, and then every subsequent request to that web page has everything ready, right? So I don't know why it's stopped now. Let me check the. Uh, is there anything here running? Now this is running perfectly fine. Ah, it's here. So that's the calendar we were talking about. And when we are clicking, you can see that the current count is increasing without anything happening to the browser. So all of this thing is is running on the browser, no JavaScript or nothing, it's just C sharp, right? It's WebAssembly. So it's it's pretty cool if you ask me. Now, let's go a step back. We are here with our Blazor app and we wanna create a component as we said. Everything is a component, so we could very well consider this component, right? The entire page, as we said before. But we want to create if you wanna if we wanna push it into NuGet as a new component, we wanna create a new assembly. This is again extremely easy and very um, familiar to everyone that's working already with uh, Razor. So let's add a new project, which will be Razor library exactly that next let's keep that name it's not very important now dot net six and we are more or less done now we have a component ready how do we call it how do we interact with it so of course we need to go here and add a reference to our project reference to our main project let's go here and reference Library. Now that screen that I'm sharing, it's big enough so you can see. I hope you're seeing good enough. If there is any uh, problem with that, just send a message. Um, yeah, I referenced my assembly, the component. Now I can go, for example, to the main layout or I can go to the index page here and under this one, try to reference the assembly. Uh, I think the name was, I didn't change it at all, right? So let's just copy it, Razor class library. I can write the Razor class library. Ah, everything was done almost automatically. Now, one more thing. Once you create your class library, your class library might want to have some, um, uh, some some services to register in the IOC in the container, right? This is usually done by adding a, a dependency injection uh, class here, then registering everything you want in the program CS. For now, since we don't want anything in the container, we don't need to do anything. We can run that. Hope this time it will be much faster, and we will see immediately our component and time is 15.33. Uh, is starting again. Not much faster as I was expecting, but anyway. So this is our component. You see, it was that easy. This means that we have completely isolated piece of code and assembly that we can do everything, anything we want here, and then just publish it as a NuGet package later on. Now, with a sample, uh, as a sample, we have this uh, JavaScript in the rope. Blazor is able to in there to Blazor has an interoperability with JavaScript, and you can call actually JavaScript, run JavaScript on the browser, and get feedback, get stuff back from the browser. Now, it comes with this very simple uh, JavaScript. It runs uh, a message, right? Nothing special. It a prompt, and then with this code here, which is the wrapper, a wrapper of our uh, JavaScript component. So a nice thing you can do if you want to dive in directly into writing Blazor components and be helpful for the community is get a JavaScript component that it's out there and you like and just create a wrapper, 
you're done. You have your, your Blazor component ready for everyone to use. So what this does is it invokes the show prompt from the JavaScript file, this thing here. Don't need to get into more details now because our topic today is not that much about how to do Blazor, but how to publish it as a NuGet package. And we have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, and this CS here, this class here, we can register in our component. How we do that? Again, if whenever if someone is familiar with JavaScript, I'm sorry for these delays, but it, they also make me understand. I need a better decision enough. Uh, let's inject each called example in the ROP and let's name it JS for speed. We want to run this prompt. So what we can do actually to run this prompt, um, let's go to, let's go to, to sorry, here to fetch data where is it here let's go to fetch data and just copy the code here this part so i don't have to write it go back to our component and paste it here we are missing a bracket as i can see we don't need this of course and on initialize async, what we need to do is actually run uh, prompt method, unless I'm wrong. We have, we have Visual Studio to help us here, so we'll see. DS, oops, sorry, not capital. DS prompt, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, we can have here hello or whatever. Now, this is almost done, but if you remember a minute ago, I told you that usually what you would do is you create a dependency injection class here and you have all the services that you need to register in the IOC container here. And then you're coming here and you're just calling this dependency, this static method usually called add uh, register whatever, my component services. Now we don't have that. And what we need to do is register that service, the example JS in the ROP. So let's go here, services. Let's add it as singleton. It's I think that we need to care much right now. Uh, and it was example. Yes, in the ROP. Come on, help me a bit here. Exam. Ah, I have another. I'm here. No suggestions. Example JS in the ROP. I will write it on my own. In the ROP, and then it will tell me what I'm missing, obviously. Uh, quick actions using. And we are done. So you see, up until now, writing Blazor is nothing new. There is no new learning curve that you have to pass. There are some strange things that you will find out about Blazor. Uh, I mean, being a bit different than actual Razor, but your knowledge, what you already know about .NET and C Sharp is there, right? I don't know why this is still in the tabernacle cannot be found. I think I added it, didn't I? But I added the using, I think. Okay. So now if we rerun our application and I could try the hot reload, but anyway, we will see that upon loading, besides having this dust, uh, uh, container of the uh, we'll also have a prompt, hopefully. Uh, 
maybe I should choose. Yeah. So that's our hello message. That's the JavaScript prompt. Okay, I didn't do anything with the uh, return. We could take the return and just type it here or do whatever. But in any case, you understand that you can write C sharp as we are doing here in the counter to actually do some stuff on the browser. But you can also write a wrapper for known JavaScript components. Or if you want to write JavaScript, you can write then a wrapper. And suddenly your JavaScript component can also be translated, be used as a Blazor component. This is what's happening with this JS in the ROP. And the good thing is that everything we've shown up until now, it's part of the um, Microsoft samples, right? When you start a Blazor application, you will see just this. And when you add a Razor component uh, in your application, then you will have this as a sample. So now that we have a better idea about uh, Blazor and how we can do components and how similar is with what we've learned so far, what, what we know so far, let's jump, and it is a jump, into a co ready component. Uh, I, do I have to restart the app? Give me a second. I'm putting studio again. Um, this component is actually a weather widget that it's out there as a NuGet package uh, available for people to use it. I didn't invest much time, so I'm not sure how free it is, let's say, uh, because it was usually, uh, it was built during um, talks. Uh, I talked about a more, more detailed talked about Blazor, a more detailed talked about DevOps and stuff, all of those talks end up being uh, this component, which still loads. So, same thing as before. We have our main application and we have our component. This app is just, uh, let's say, um, a, a wrapper. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to see how things work. And this is actually deployed as an app service, as a static web app. Yeah, as a static web app in Azure, so we can actually see it running. The the core though is the weather widget. Now, if we go here in the pages, in the application, and in the index, we only have one uh, page here. It's one page site, let's say. We have some blah 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 on how you can find the component, and down here refers to the component itself. This is what we did before that we referenced. The dot component one. This component is named weather widget, as you can see also with the names here. And we can also pass uh, properties. So we can pass some default values or we can interact with it. So we can customize, let's say. For now, I only pass the current city. So this is the default city of uh, someone wanting to see weather, as you can understand by the name, by weather city, weather widget. But there are other things you can do. We say just passing the uh, city, the default city yet that you want, you can also pass a custom template on how this weather widget will be parsed. Let's go directly to see it in, in uh, GitHub and in Azure, because if we try to run that here, I'm afraid while um, presenting, it will take long time. I think I have the GitHub page open already. Yes, I have it here. So we can see that. Where is it? So, ah, uh, and this, I, I, I was trying, I didn't have enough time to also present something with GitHub Actions instead of doing it with Azure DevOps, maybe next time. So, we have our component, everything is ready. We need the repo, we push our code to the repo. And then as the next steps, what we want to do is get only our component, build it and push it as a new Git package, right? For that, we want some help. We want CI, CD, and what we will see today is done with Azure DevOps. GitHub Actions is uh, mostly the same. This is the weather widget that we were talking about. I hope it still runs yeah this is the default template a template that comes with the uh, uh nuget uh, package and this is a user defined template as you saw already in the code so if we go back here 
and you visit uh, this repo, you will see this is the component and, oh no, let's go step. This is the component, correct? But this is the app, third, sorry, again, uh, need to focus a bit. Pages, index razor, and at first we have the component itself and then we have a custom template that I just wrote as a sample. This is what we see here. We can also change that to, I don't know, let's say London and we will get weather for London. And everything is done again without any kind of refresh, right? So th there are extensive uh, um, um, explanations here of how exactly to use it and how, what you need to develop it. but. It's, this is for anyone that wants to get deeper into Blazor. For us, what we know want to do now is the second step is those two things. Publish it to NuGet and use a pipeline to actually do it. Now, what do we need to do that? First of all, we need to go to NuGet.org. Here, I, yeah, you log in, uh, you can see a list of all your components published or not. This is the Blazor weather widget that we have here and some other components that I'm playing around uh, with uh, conferences. You can add the new component. This is maybe sometimes a good idea to do it. Uh, I, I will explain later why, but the main reason is that you, uh, you will see later um, security wise why it's a good idea to do it now. But one of a good reason that we can see now is um, um, because we, we have a, a, let's say, an error checking if everything is correct. In order to have our NuGet package published, we need to have some additional. I have two windows. My PC can't handle that. Uh, we need to have some additional properties here. I will let you show you now. So we run down to package. We need to check this one in order to create a new Git package. And then by scrolling, we need a package version. Definitely, these are not necessary. But one other thing that it is mandatory, it's, give me some time, we will finally, ah, oh, I can go here, license. You need to choose a license for your component, uh, whatever you need to publish to NuGet. And in order to do that, you need to choose either embed a license if you have your own legal department or something, or choose this format uh, for that one is Apache 2.0, or you can also have MIT, right? This is the only properties that you need to keep in mind in order to publish the NuGet package. And if you build the solution, you will get a new Git package right here. Oops. Here, let's open containing folder. Uh, it's that one, and it is 48. We have some time. Debug. You get your new gear you get packets here so you can come here let's copy this path come to new get and dot org and find your file here upload it this verifies yeah my new get packet is already there one thing i could do was to change this number to 106 and then it would accept it or have a different package name yeah Assuming your package is unique and new, you will not have this problem. You will you will uh, get through this stage and then you are done. You uploaded your package for the first time. Once you do that, you need to come here to um, API keys. In order to be able to upload uh, NuGet packages with any CI CD, you need to somehow verify that you are the owner of that NuGet package, right? And in order to do that, you are doing it with keys. This is an old key, some presentation probably. What do we, didn't I delete it? What do we need from that key now? What do we need to do? 
the key name, let's say that it's a test blazor key name, expires. Let's see if it expired tomorrow. And then the scopes or the permissions. This key can either push new packages or only new package versions. This is the security thing I was telling you before, because if you have a key and somehow this gets around, then they can upload packages in your name, new packages. But if you have it here, at least, yeah, they might mess around with the old packages, but you can revert them back and no, no big uh, damage is done. You can also have this unchecked because unlisting a package is usually not done by a CICD process. And now that we are having the, uh, the information, the scope that this key can only push new package versions, the question is for which uh, packages that we already have. Let's assume it's for that package, create, and wait, where is it? Here. Now we have this copy, this action here, just copied in the clipboard, the key, and this can be done just for a few minutes. After some time, this copy function will go away and you will not be able to copy it again. So you will need to regenerate the key. Uh, as you can see here, there is no copy here. But now we have it in clipboard. So let's go to the next step. And what time is it? It's 15.50. Okay, we have some time. Let's go to dev azure com uh, this is from another presentation so let's go here once here you need to either create or use another product a uh, project that you already have right let's try to create one and then you will we will go back to this weather widget project so we can see uh, what's happening there because it's a nice uh, starting point for you to remember so New project, let's test that test, uh, let's name that, sorry. Test laser, it's public one, totally fine. Create. Ah, it will take a few seconds, not much, not there, everything is slow. So I don't know now if it's Azure DevOps or my browser. Anyway, done that first thing we need to do is go to project settings here scroll down a bit and i know we will not use boards at all so we can remove it but we will use pipelines and you could also use repos but we have our code in github right so we don't need that for now uh we enabled repos we can go back to the first page let's go here and we have our project with a pipeline ready. So before we start creating our pipeline or jumping into the pipeline of the uh, uh, weather widget, we need to do one more thing. In order to call the, to be able to access NuGet.org, uh, we need to have a service connection. I think it's called service reference here. If I, it's called service connection. So. We create a new service connection with NuGet. And then we need an API key. This is the API key. I think it's, yeah, it's not visible even now. And we wanna, you might have a custom NuGet server, right? But this is uh, for the public one. Let's go here. Service connection name, test laser. Um, connection, let's check it like that. And yes. grant permissions to all pipelines. This is not uh, actually uh, something that you should do in a real life project. You should only give permission to the pipeline you want because usually we assign pipelines to different teams or people and only the ones that you choose to have permissions to publish new NuGet packages you should have uh, permissions to actually do it, right? But for now, we don't really mind saving. And now we have this uh, connection with a new Git server. If we go back in the pipelines, how we use it, we can actually switch, what time is it? Yeah, we can actually switch to the ready project now, to the weather widget, so we can see stuff here. To a pipeline, 
Well, I have three pipelines that they run here. One is to push a release to NuGet. The other is just builds everything. And the other releases the sample page that we've seen here, this one. So for my repo, I'm following the release flow. Uh, I, it's something that I would advise, which means that you can push whatever you want to main. The main pipeline that you've seen there already is just uh, running tests. And if everything is correct, it doesn't push anything to NuGet. And whenever I create a branch, a release branch with a specific version, then this release pipeline here fires and sends the new release to uh, NuGet.org. Now, how things are done. As I said already, uh, I try to make the screen a bit, yeah, maybe that's better. And can I, I don't know. Anyway, it runs only on release branches. I need Windows because I want to be Blazor. Uh, install, it's not actually installed, it's set up, I would, or, or use .NET 6. It's, it, we don't need to install, it's already there. So I should change that to use. Um, we publish the application. If you remember that checkbox here and how important that is, it means that it will, with publish, it will also create a new Git package, right? Uh, but in any case, we also pack it here. We're saying that we need this specific uh, weather widget, this specific CS prods. We don't care, of course, to pack the entire application, the UI, that thing here. And then the last one, it's this. We want to push everything into uh, NuGet. We choose only the NuGet package. This is easy. We have only one because we built only one out of it. And we the credentials, the public credentials, the ones that I named before, uh, was it? Test does blazor does, does new get does con is now a new git here. This is the name. So if we go here to the settings, the new window, and in service connections, we'll see that exactly what we did before, and we named it uh, test does blazor does con. It's, I named it here in NuGet. Maybe I should have found a not so abstract or general name, but anyway, this is what we have here. We are telling him that, you know, the credentials in order to be able to publish this feed are named NuGet. So this is the way actually to keep them safe and uh, outside the public eyes, yeah, or the team's eyes. And that is it. Once we run something now, we will be able to push a new version. And we can also see that if we go to the Blazor GitHub uh, weather widget here, uh, what we can do is we already have five brands. What we can do is go, let's go from early on from here to see the process exactly. Uh, let's see the version, we scroll up. Oh, come on. This is the latest version we have. Let's assume a change and name that version six. We built see ev that everything is correct. This build will also give us a NuGet package in the uh, output folder, in the bin folder of our component. And we could very well uh, upload it manually, right? With the way we see before. But what we need to do here is actually publish it. So we're in the main branch and based on the release flow, on the git release flow, we can very well push whatever we want here. I am also, I think I've set myself as an admin, obviously. So if I go, let's do it everything with, from within studio. If I go here, I see that the only change, of course, it's uh, the version change. And I can just a uh, version change for a uh, for a presentation, right? Without the B. Commit all um, and push our changes, and this will fire up all the sequence. Now, one of those things will not work already. Uh, 
it will not publish anything here in the uh, static web app that I have because the service connection that I have with Azure changed. I had a page go subscription that my subscription ID was published to more people and to a, during a presentation and I had to change that. So if you go here, just leave it and we'll see later how things um, Fired up, service connection. What? Ah, no, sorry. Service connection. This is my subscription that I was using. This changed already because the subscription ID was visible and now uh, it cannot publish. I will change it sometime, but let's see. Now I have a, another subscription to use. So if we go back to our pipelines, we can close that and go back. The main is running already. The sample and NuGet don't run because we don't have a release brand, right? This main, if we go through it, we have, a, I think, 10 minutes more. And please feel free if you have any questions. Um, it's just doing, sorry. It's just building and checking if everything is okay and if all tests pass and if you can have a new git package and also it builds the markdown uh, in order to be able to publish it yeah later on so all of that, those are done here but not because i want to publish them just because i want to test that i can actually create a new git package and everything now if i go to my repo here and try to create a new branch for example, uh, let's see, how can I do it within GitHub? I'm not very sure because I'm usually doing it outside, but let's see. Mm, how can I do a new branch? How can I create a new branch here? Main. Hmm. Maybe I will do it from studio and or from git and that is it yeah so just not to lose time right now it's interesting to find out but let's do it from studio what we can do here uh where is git what we can do here is actually come here create a new branch named release just do i use the v let me I want to be consistent at least. Yeah. And this was 106, right? V106. This is, of course, not the proper way. We need to tag the version. We need to do a lot more things, but let's just see the actual uh, pipelines running. And we can push that. Uh, let's change here because I will forget it now if we come here most probably what we have is another branch okay is another branch the 106 and if we go to the pipelines over here hopefully yeah they are running this will fail because it will not manage to push this there is no subscription for that and this will Manage to work. We can check how it's doing. Here, uh, let's see the pine if we have any questions or anything. I think it's Google Chrome and this one. I think everything goes well here. So what this is actually doing is using um, a runner, it's picking up a runner, an available running, everything is for free anyway that we did so far. So you can you can you can feel free to uh, do that. It's it says install, but it doesn't install .NET 6, it's setting up .NET 6. It will use NuGet. This step I think it's not necessary now. I could remove it, the NuGet tool installer. Um, then it uses the .NET Publish to publish the solution. It uses the .NET Pack 
to pack the solution and create a new Git package, and then it uses new Git uh, push to actually push the the content the and UPKG into NuGet.org. Very important step before that is to change your version because if we try to run, we can do it that later. If we try to run the pipeline again without changing the version, of course, we'll get the same message as trying to upload the version, the one that we saw before. But you know, this combination, package ID and version, is already up there, and we don't, uh, we can see it. We you can't upload it. George. Yes, we, uh, we're actually through with regards to the time. We but are we? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a nice because yeah, I don't have much things to say anymore. Uh, I mean, you have to believe me that this will run correctly, <laughs> and that is it. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was fifteen to be honest. That's why I was more relaxed. No worries. Anyway. No worries. It was a five. Yeah. Um, I really like this session, actually. Very practical, starting with the Blazor package, uh, actually uploading it to NuGet and then setting up the pipeline. This is yeah. the final phase of actually pushing a new version. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I, I don't exactly. think it's going to go wrong here. No, it's already it already worked. So, yeah. So, done. so, thanks, everyone. This is the last session for the observability and security track. Uh, the next session will be the keynote, and it will be on the first track. Um, so we'll see you on that one. George Cosmides, everyone, check him out in the speaker info. Uh, links to socials will be there. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Patrick. No problem.